Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Cooking with Miss Pivotone. I have some avocados that are pretty ripe and need to be used. My students who know me know that tacos and guacamole are my favorite. So let's make some guacamole and have some tacos for dinner. What I love about guacamole is I always just make it with whatever I have and I make it to taste, meaning I taste it as I go and I determine what spices I think it kind of needs. So if you like to experiment with your food, this is a fun recipe for you. So let's get started. <laughs> One thing that I would like to note is that we will be using a knife. So please make sure that an adult is present with you and you are very safe. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my knife if you are young, have an adult help you. And I'm gonna cut my avocados in half. I just kind of slice and slowly rotate. I want to go slow so that I don't hurt myself. All right, once you do that, twist. Look at that, easy. Then I will take a bigger spoon and I'm just gonna go around the, the edges and scoop all that avocado out. You wanna really make sure you get back in there to scoop it. Now this one has a pit in it. I'm gonna show you the easy way of getting it out without hurting yourself. Just take a fork and kinda of dig that bad boy out. Okay, same thing. We are going to scoop all the way around our avocado and get it right in a bowl. Get all that good stuff in there. And I'm gonna repeat the same process for my other two avocados. Gently slicing in half, just kind of gliding the avocado around the knife, okay? Watching my fingers, going nice and slow till I get to the end. Putting the knife down, twisting, and it's ready. And once again, we are scooping. You wanna make sure that your avocados are ripe, meaning they're pretty soft to the touch. They're a little bit squishy, bendable if you will. All right, I'm gonna take that pit and just kinda of dig it out a little bit with my fork. And nice scooping, look at that. This is a lot of avocados. But I do have one more, and honestly, I don't really see myself using it other than guac, so I'm just gonna go ahead and make it. If you have one guacamole, I'm sorry, if you have one avocado, go ahead and use one. If you have two, go ahead and use two. I just happen to have three. This is gonna be a lot. This is a tiny little pit, look at that. And I'm just gonna scoop, oop, that pit went flying. All right. And that was nice and easy. It is really easy when your avocado is nice and ripe. If you use an avocado that's not ripe, it becomes difficult. All right. So that is that. Now before I start adding ingredients, I like to mush my avocado and already get it to that nice mushy consistency. You can use a fork and just press against the side. Or if you have a potato masher, go ahead and use that. I think the potato masher gives better results and it's quicker. I just push down and scrape along the sides. And once it sits on top, just give it a tap, tap, and keep going. You want it to be the consistency of like mashed potatoes. Some people like chunky guacamole. I put a lot of stuff in my guacamole, so I like the avocado to be more of a smooth consistency, not too lumpy. So you just keep on going. It is 
time for some seasonings and ingredients. Again, I use whatever I have in the kitchen and go from there really. So I always do a little bit of salt. Sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. I do some pepper. I like pepper, so I'm gonna give it a lot. And I also have a lot of avocado here, so I'm just gonna go to town. If you like a little spice, I throw some red pepper flakes in there. If you do not like a little spice, don't even worry about this. Or if you don't have it, don't even worry about it. But I like the spice. I like the spice so much that I put a little jalapenos in there. I keep the can of diced jalapenos at home in my refrigerator always. But if you happen to have a jalapeno, go ahead and chop it, but wear gloves. There was one time, guys, I got jalapeno in my eye. Whew, not a fun experience. Here's like a little half of a spoonful. I'm gonna do two of those. I just kind of drain the juices onto the side of that. Shake it in. Now, if again, if you don't have it, or if you don't like spice, you don't have to throw the jalapenos in there. Totally a preference thing. I also love garlic. I keep a big jar of garlic at home just because it's easier. Growing up, my dad always said, you need to chop your garlic fresh. What are you doing? And I said, dad, it takes too long. When you can just kind of reach in here, get a spoonful, it just saves so much time. And honestly, peeling garlic is a pain. It takes forever. But if you don't have the jar and you have garlic, fresh garlic at home, just have an adult help you peel it and chop it up fine to this little dice mixture there. Okay, that's a spoonful of garlic. Now we're gonna get ready to use our knife again, so make sure you are being safe. I love great tomatoes. I actually eat these as snacks. Just go in my refrigerator. I eat great tomatoes as snacks. They're my favorite. So I'm gonna go ahead and chop these bad boys up. If you don't have grape tomatoes, don't worry about it. If you have regular tomatoes, use that. But I'm gonna be very careful because my knife is gonna be sharp. So I go down the center of my grape tomato and also both vertically and horizontally. So there you go, they're kind of chunky. I like chunky tomatoes in my, in my guacamole. If you don't, then you'll just wanna cut them maybe three times going like long ways like that okay watch your fingers you do not want to get hurt and I do have a lot of avocado so I'm gonna I'm gonna do a lot of it my knife isn't really too sharp so I kind of have to do a sawing motion I think I'm gonna go grab a sharper knife to make this easier. So I'll be right back, I'm gonna put this down here. I even have a knife sharpener, so I'll go ahead and sharpen my knife on here. This is something you will need an adult's help with. And then I'm gonna go ahead and rinse off my knife because we don't want any metal shavings. Okay, let's see if this helps us cut the tomatoes a little bit easier. Oh, much easier. Oh my goodness, that makes the biggest difference. You know what, I'll cut that one in half too. I'm using a lot of produce, so make sure that you clean it beforehand. Just rinse it in the sink. You don't have to use soap, but definitely give it a nice rinse. If you do want it a little bit of a better clean, you can use like vinegar or salt water even. That's a little too big. And I'm just kinda doing a rough chop as I call it. All my tomatoes are not the same size, but that's okay. I like some chunky. 
All right, let's do about two more and throw them in. This one. You guys see? And remember, I'm doing this by taste. So if I find that I do not have enough tomatoes, I'm just gonna add some more, guys. So I'll take this and my bowl, my cutting board, and I'm just gonna slide it in. See, easy peasy. Be careful, I've been known to kinda spill some tomatoes all over the place, but that happens. So again, our tomatoes are in. So far we have our avocado. We have our garlic, we have our tomatoes, we have salt, pepper, jalapenos, and red pepper flakes. Let's go ahead and move on to my favorite part, the red onion. The red onion I always keep at home. I put it on my burgers, I put it in my sausage and peppers, I put it in all my pasta salads, just one of my favorites. If you don't have a red onion, you can use any onions that you have at home. You can even use onion powder. I'll show you guys what that looks like. Looks like Miss Pipton is out of onion powder. No, I have it. So if you do not have garlic or, gar or onion, you can use garlic powder and onion powder. I didn't even think to get it out because I know I usually always have it. Onions make your eyes water when you are cutting them. So if your eyes begin to water, step away. I start by cutting off one end and then I start by cutting off the other end. This is a giant onion, so there is no way I'm using this entire thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and peel it and then maybe cut a quarter of it. I don't, definitely don't need all of this. Uh, it's already smelling good. And I'll just wanna make sure that I, if I start tearing up, I take a break, cause I'll be using a knife and I just don't want to hurt myself. If my eyes are watery and teary, I'm not gonna be able to see where I'm cutting and that can be dangerous, guys. So we'll just keep that in mind. I like to make sure all of the skin is off. There we go. All right, I'm gonna cut about a quarter of this. That's all I really need. Remember, just be very careful. You're using a knife. Okay, there's a half. Set that to the side. And about a quarter. Seems about right. I do love onions, so I'll probably use a lot of this. If you don't like onions as much, then don't use as much. I'm just start slicing vertically. I'm keeping my fingers out of the way. So you see as a knife goes down, I move my fingers out of the way. So far my eyes are feeling okay, so I do not need to take a break. When it starts to get to this end, I worry about my fingers, so what I do is flip it over. I just wanna make sure my fingers get out of the way. Don't know if this is a proper technique to cutting an onion, but it keeps my fingers safe. Okay, <laughs> so now that I've done all that, I like it smaller bits, so I'm just gonna take each one and slice a little bit smaller. Like that's a little too big. Each one, slice a little bit smaller. And making sure you're watching your fingers at all times or you just have an adult slice for you. This must not be a strong onion because my eyes are still doing okay, but I don't want to jinx it. And you do notice I gently slide the excess onions off of my knife. Just be very careful, guys. See, gently slide, making sure to stay away from the sharp edge. Almost there. Okay. 
All right, now it looks like a lot of onions. You do not have to use this much. Just use whatever you prefer. Remember, we do it to taste. I think I'm actually just gonna start with just a little bit of it, to be honest. All right. Maybe save some of that to the side. So this is what we have so far. Now, one of the main components of guacamole is cilantro. You should really use fresh cilantro, but I rarely have that. I do have dry cilantro leaves. So I'm gonna put this in here and I'm gonna be generous, meaning I'm gonna put a lot in there. I think that's good. Another key ingredient to guacamole is lime. I actually happen to have a lime on hand. Never really something I do have. Normally I just have lime juice. So again, whatever you guys have, I'm going to take this lime and I'm going to roll it. And what this does is it loosens up all the juices inside, just making it easier to juice really. Just roll it kind of like a stress ball, all right? Once I rolled it, I'm gonna slice it in half. And I don't have a juicer, but that's okay. I'm just gonna go ahead and squeeze it all around. And I'm gonna try and get all of the juice that I can out of this lime. really kind of use both hands, rotate it around, squeeze it a little more. Sometimes I'll take my fork and I'll go inside and I'll just loosen up a little bit more. Just wiggle back and forth, not too much pressure. And it kind of helps. I, sometimes I just like scrape, oops, I squirted. I don't really mind if the pulp gets in. It doesn't bother me any. If you don't like the pulp, then you'll just kind of avoid my scraping method. <laughs> this is just how I juice a lime or a lemon too. Sometimes I like lemon in my iced tea. This is what I do. All right, that seems like a lot of lime juice. So I'm gonna just keep that amount. Grab another napkin. Okay. Now we have all the ingredients that I normally put in guacamole, so I'm going to mix it on up. I love the color that the tomato and the onions give. Oh my goodness, it looks so good. All right, now, if you remember, I said I usually make guacamole to taste. So I'm just gonna go ahead and taste it. I'm gonna take my fork. I'm just gonna reuse the one I used for my lime. And I'm gonna take a taste. Do I even have a tomato in there? Mmm, good. Definitely missing a lot of cilantro. It's kind of bland, you know? I'm gonna put a lot of cilantro in there. I'm even just gonna throw a little more salt and pepper. And you know what? Not really as spicy as I like it. So I'm gonna go back in with some jalapenos, boys and girls. My favorite, and my jar's almost empty, so I'm wondering if I should just use the whole jar. No, that was a lot. Yeah, maybe not. And I'm gonna go ahead with these onions. I'm just gonna throw a little more in there. Why not? Why not? I like the onions, guys. And you know, whatever I don't use, I'll just throw in a Ziploc bag. I'm even thinking and chop up a couple more tomatoes. Sometimes I can tell it needs more tomatoes just because I don't see a lot of the red. Oh, this one's my sharp one. Look at the difference. Yeah, part of working in the kitchen is making sure your tools stay taken care of, nice and sharp pretty important. Can you guys see me chopping over here? I'm gonna make sure you guys can see me. All 
No, I didn't cut that one the way I normally do. That's all right. All right. Bringing my bowl back into view for you guys and getting these tomatoes in there. Alrighty. Time for another mix. And just definitely want to make sure all the cilantro, salt, and pepper that was sitting on the top gets thoroughly mixed through. Alright. Taking my fork. Oh, perfect amount of spice. I definitely think perfect amount of spice. I'm thinking I can squeeze a little lime in there. Let's see. Oh, there's no more left in this one. Oh, there we go. Maybe a little more from this. There we go. And this, I think, should do it. This is a lot of guacamole. Remember, I used three avocados. You guys might only want to use one or two. All right, final tasting. Mm. All right, guys, it is perfect. I'm so excited to make tacos tonight. Let me know if you try it. Bye.